Guys, in this episode, Harry's going to make a confession. There's a part of me that feels like I am really after selling my soul. And we'll take a trip to Strand Hill to see how a professional makes a boat canopy. And we do some maintenance on the boat. That's all coming up. Do you know what? It doesn't really matter what sort of boat you have. It could be GRP fiberglass, it could be wood, or it could be steel. But either way, there's always a heck of a lot of boat maintenance to be done. And what we're doing here now, we really should have taken the boat out and put it into a shed and given it a proper paint job this year. But being the year that's in it, we decided to get out and use the boat as much as we can to try and make up for the lackey hoose we got over the winter. So we're just going to paint it as we go along. So this is the kind of attention to detail. I saw a guy doing this on a boat, a lovely old wooden boat many years ago. And uh, the time spent doing this is well worth the while. You see, this is just the masking tape. And when I mark out that curve, and I pull that off. Now when I put my deck paint down on that, I'll have a lovely round, rounded corner. And, uh, I'm doing that on, I think it's 36 different corners. <laughs> some of them are external and some are internal. All fun. There's not much work involved in actually applying the paint itself. All the work is done before that, when you're prepping the surface, priming it, treating the rust with rust eaters, and then, of course, putting on all the masking tape and marking out the corners, cutting it. Applying the paint is the easy bit, but removing the masking tape, that's, Probably the most rewarding bit. So that's the front deck done. I'm quite happy with it. I think it looks quite neat. I'm really kind of in two minds. You see, there's a part of me that feels like I am really after selling my soul. Because for years and years and years, I kind of didn't want a canopy at all on the boat. Uh, I felt that some guy had sat down ever before the days of computers and he designed this boat. Uh, with pen and paper and he'd sketch it out and I didn't want a big load of canvas on the back right into a port looking like the circus has just come to town. So initially I compromised and said we'd go for a bimini then that took legs the bimini all of a sudden became um, a canopy that would take up half the back deck that grew a little bit further and now we've gone for a full canopy. Uh, <laughs> The thing about it is, I don't know whether it's going to look right on the boat or not look right in the boat until it's fitted. And at that stage, well, there's no going back. We took a trip to the beautiful seaside town of Strand Hill in County Sligo to visit Cameron's workshop where he let us take a behind the scenes look at how it is that he actually builds these canopies. And one of the first things you notice is the size of his desk. This desk is actually made up of nine eight by four sheets of ply. I think the President of the United States doesn't have a desk as large as Cameron's desk. And situated midway along this desk is a fairly hefty industrial sewing machine. So you just uh, sew which, how much cane that you're going to put into the yeah. top of the bar. I've got a couple of marks on here which I usually mm -hmm. use as a guide. So you can put a nice little sort of curve in there, you can put more on if you need be. And that just puts a nice gentle bend in it. Yeah. You can see there. Yeah. Very nice. Once we um, we decide what sort of frame frame the, the castle wants, mm -hmm. and what sort of cover they want, I um, make the frame, bring it down to the boat, set it up, um, and then start taking the pattern using the the white pattern yeah. fabric there, which is wasting the the, the precious yeah, canvas yeah. that costs yeah, exactly, costs yeah. a bit. So yeah. uh, once that's done, I um, fit fit the uh, the hood, bring it back, uh -huh. and then cut the pattern out, which takes about a day. Right. Um, yeah. Then lay the pattern on the on the canvas itself, and 
That's Mark it all out, and that takes another good day as well. That's a lot of work. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Yeah. To get yeah. the right, you know, to get it right, you take your time and get it right first time. Otherwise, uh, has consequences when you're fitting the cover. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the weirdest job ever done was probably uh, a bow for a, a mini Cooper car that is a father bought for his daughter. Excellent. I what, imagine. What, yeah. color, what color was it? A big pink. A big one, red it? one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took a while of nutting out because he wanted it to sit nice. Tom, how come you came to Ireland? Uh, well, I was working in Mallorca. I got a job in Mallorca and I was working there for a couple of years and uh, always wanted to go and see England and other countries. So I was, went to England and I was working in a sail loft down in Cornwall for a, for a year or so and uh, got sick of there because the surf wasn't great. And then I heard the surf was amazing in, in Ireland. So uh, through a friend of a friend, we found a place in Strand Hill and uh, didn't know anything about the place. Just heard the surf was good and Mm -hmm. Arrived here in 2001 and haven't looked back since. So I asked Cameron, what is it about surfing that makes it such an addictive sport? Just the feeling you get when you're catching a wave of all that ocean behind you, it's just amazing. Yeah. Well guys, it's finally D-Day. We're on our way to Boyle Harbour to pick up our canopy. Not canopies, Harry. A canopy. Not canopies. A canopy. I know everybody knows Harry doesn't really want this canopy. <laughs> and I am like a child at Christmas Eve. I am so anxious, so excited to be able to get this canopy after all these years. Are you all excited now? Are you anxious like <laughs> I'm I am? I'm anxious, yeah. I am kind of anxious because like this started out as just a bimini. I kind of conceded and said, yeah, we'll get a bimini. Then it grew and grew and grew. And um, I, I thought, you, you, We've all been in a harbour at some stage and you see a boat coming in and there's a canopy on it and it's just way too big and people are going, oh, circus is coming to town. I don't want I don't want it to look like that. And um Sorry, can I just stop you there? Yeah. I am just, we're going under the bridge here in Boyle for the last time without a canopy. I hope when we come back down the canopy will fit onto the bridge or we just don't leave it on the other side of the bridge. That'll be the first test of it, won't it? Well yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I shouldn't be saying that to you, now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's it's a done deal, right? Yeah. Cameron, the the boat has been measured up for canopy. Uh, Cameron has made the canopy, and uh, today he's going to come down and and fit it. So there's nothing else for it except <laughs> just keep oh. just keep the fingers crossed that this is going to look as good as we hope it's going to look. But if building a canopy is a complex and skilled task, fitting it is probably no easier, at least for its first fitting. There's a lot of adjustments that need to be made at this point and an awful lot of the fittings are actually put in right at the very last minute. Well, we had to go with a number of bars. We had five ribs across the, the roof on this canopy because we didn't want to have an apex. We want to keep it as low as we possibly could. And like with everything else in boating, this is always a compromise. And the compromise in this was, well, just put in extra bars. But in fairness, Cameron came down and actually took probably the best part of a full day to get the, the final fitting done. But I think you'll agree, the finished product might take a bit of getting used to, but it looks quite well. So the look at Riftwood has changed permanently from its old look. To its new look. Oh, I can't believe it looks fabulous. I, well, I think it looks fabulous. Really hard, what do you think? The, yeah, I've no problem with the um, the quality of the finish. It's absolutely superb. It's not too high. Um, my only worry is when I'm driving the boat, I have to pay extra attention at bridges, especially at arched bridges, so they don't catch the, the back of the canopy in the bridge. That's just a matter of getting used to it. Yeah. What I really love about canopy is that we can socialise in it. And it's lovely just to go people watching, have a glass of beer or a bottle of wine. So guys, that brings us to the end of another episode. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget, thumbs up. Cheerio. Subscribing to the Driftwood Boat Blog is absolutely free. All you do is you go to YouTube, in the search bar, type in Driftwood Boat Blog. And up the top there you'll see the Driftwood Boat Blog logo, just click on that and that brings you to our channel and to over 100 videos. If you click the subscribe button, click the bell, tick all, you'll get a notification every time we bring out a new video and you'll also be helping the channel. Thanks for subscribing.